I am very grateful to say that today's video is brought to you thanks to Audible, today's sponsor. Audible, of course, is the very famous service that allows you to play and download audiobooks on the go. Every month that you have Audible, you get one credit that you can use towards any free audiobook you'd like, and two additional free Audible originals that you can unlock every single month. Unlock all of this and more in your free 30-day trial today by going to audible.com slash Quentin, or text Quentin to 500-500. Once again, that's audible.com slash Q-U-I-N-T-O-N, or Q-U-I-N-T-O-N to 500-500. The end of the year always signals in us a, a point of reflection, where we look back and we say, how did my year go? Did I accomplish any of my goals? Did I uh, make myself a better person? Did I lose weight? Did I gain weight? Seriously, guys, which is it? No one in the comments can seem to agree. All right, that's a joke. I don't, I don't read the comments. 3,652 days, 43% of the days that I have been alive on Earth, and we're gonna pack it all away so we can start over with a brand new, clean, retrospective slate. Of course, time is just a construct invented by man to force rhythm and logic into a world of uneven chaos, so enjoy those first four or five days of optimism while you can, before you realize that everything's basically the same, your life still sucks, except now you're really tired of hearing jokes about hindsight. I really desperately wanted to do a video reflecting on the last 10 years, talking about some of my personal experiences, looking at everything that happened, be it good or bad, and just taking it all in and trying to, you know, find some consensus among it. Uh, but I realized a video like that was unlikely to perform very well, and I had so many projects I wanted to do this month, it just would have taken away from things that would have, you know, done better. But then, I started thinking about the very specific humor that the internet has developed in the last 10 years and how terrible it is. And I realized that in a strange way, memes online are a really perfect jumping point to analyzing all of the things that have happened in the last 10 years. And so I thought it would be fun to make a video reflecting on the worst memes of the decade, because having bad memes is sort of what I associate the 2010s with now. Along the way, I'll also reflect on some personal stories, I'll talk about world events, and overall we're going to be looking at memes as a reflection of the real world, as an art form that the mainstream media either rejects or misunderstands, and as a dumpster fire waiting to kill all of us. So I think it's pretty fitting that we start off this discussion of memes with a simpler one, from a more civilized age. I'm talking about the always classic, Advice Animals. Advice Animals took hold because of the sudden invention of websites that would allow users to add custom text to pre-existing images. A lot of these ended up being heads photoshopped over a pinwheel, and a lot of Advice Animals weren't animals. In fact, Rage Comics, another thing we've talked about in the past, is actually sort of a spin-off of Advice Animals, but we're just gonna stick to animals for this part of the video. I think the most iconic character to me is probably Velociraptor who basically would say things that you would today expect to see on the top of r slash shower thoughts. Anyways, advice animals eventually evolved into the unpopular opinion puffin, which is a terrible meme, but is not the worst meme we're going to be talking about today. So the point of unpopular opinion puffin is that he looks all cute, he's waddling around like a baby taking his first steps, but at the same time he's saying something inherently unpopular. Often editors would use this to insert opinions which were just like stupid and inoffensive and barely worth arguing with. Peanut butter is gross. Leggings are not pants. Frozen sucks. Ranch dressing is absolutely disgusting. The other way that meme was used was like this. I think that LGBT are among the least tolerant people, and that they project their hate onto people who disagree with their lifestyle. Uh... I think people need to stop pushing justice for Trayvon, because the evidence led to an acquittal that people won't take for an answer. Uh I think we should kill off all severely mentally and physically handicapped people. What's the point in letting them live if they cannot be productive members of society and their life is going to suck anyways? 
I think that war and genocide is beneficial for the rest of us because it keeps the human population down. You know, you know somehow I feel like we peaked when they were talking about killing disabled people. I, it's, this is just numb to me now. So advice animals are probably some sort of holy land in terms of the evolution of online internet humor, but it was in 2011 that we actually saw a series of memes that I recall being the first ones that I strongly loved more than I had any sorts of jokes on the internet before. To start us off, let's check up on a little Pop-Tart cat, just trying to find his way. Neon Cat was my shit in 2011. I loved it so much. I have this very strong memory of one time I uh, wanted some music to put on to fall asleep to, so I downloaded an app that just played the song and little animation in a loop, and I left it playing by my bedside, and I fell asleep, and my sister woke me up, because as you can imagine, that was the most obnoxious sound in the world, and she could not get to sleep in her room next door. And yeah, Neon Cat would probably become super annoying if I had to hear that song more than once every 10 years, but I, I don't know, there's something about the character that I find so impossible to hate. It's just so cute, so inoffensive, from such an innocent time in the internet. It just makes me feel good. I found out that at the height of Neon Cat's success, YouTube added a feature to the Neon Cat video, where the progress bar was replaced with Neon Cat running across the screen. And then someone made a Chrome add-on that does this for every YouTube video you watch, and it still works. Look at that. Look at that little boy go. This has drastically improved every aspect of my YouTube viewing experience. Later in 2011, a video game was released by the title of Ender Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, I'm no gamer, and I wasn't one at the time either, but the one thing I immediately learned from any of my friends who were into gaming was that if you interacted with specific NPCs, they would all occasionally give you a very specific line of dialogue that was very funny. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. I used to be an adventurer like you, then I took an arrow in the knee. I used to be an adventurer like you, then I took an arrow in the knee. So at face value I can understand how the error to the knee meme would seem nearly identical to all the other macros we've talked about up to this point. A typical advice animal would be like, Good guy Greg gives you his lunch money. Or whatever you want to put as like the bottom text. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Every time I say bottom text, I think of that clip of Tim Pool not understanding the bottom text meme. In, in understanding why the left can't meme, what, they, they just put bottom text here. It's, and they used meme generator. It's like they didn't even know they were supposed to change this. They had no idea what they were doing. Anyways, the point is that all these macros were based around specific setups, and then you could use the images to write your own punchlines. And so error to the knee is very similar. Every image would be like, I used to be blank, but then I took an arrow to the knee. But there's a big difference between this meme and all of the other memes that I had known up to this point, and that is that in all of these other macros, there was a joke in the text. Even if it was repetitious, even if I always knew what it was going to be, there was some setup and punchline in the material. But with Arrow to the Knee, the entire humor was found in the fact that I recognized the line from a piece of media released around the same time. And so the secret to the evolution of memes on the internet is that over time, instead of the reference in these memes being to a piece of television or to being from a video game or a film for around the same time, the meme started to reference the existence of memes themselves, sort of like pointing a camera into its own viewfinder, and that's when things get weird. Bottom text. Now, throughout this video, I'm mainly going to be trying to tackle memes from my generation, mainly because that feels a little bit more fun, but uh, I would be making it a service to you guys if I didn't stop to mention two memes which found completely different masters. The Minion memes made by Boomers, and the Joker memes made by Zoomers. Here's a fun fact. Google defines Generation Z as anyone born between 1997 and 2012, and I was born in December 1996, so I missed being a part of that shit show by about 25 days. Also, apparently anyone born after 2012 is a part of Generation Alpha, which is bullshit. How come these snot-nosed brats get the cool name? Anyway, so the minion meme is, um... 
You guys know what the minion meme is, why do I need to explain it? It's just whatever bullshit your weird uncle said to you over the holidays, but they attached it to a photo of a minion. That's what it is. God is like oxygen. You can't see him, but you can't live without him. Putting your phone away and paying attention to those talking to you? There is an app for that. It's called RESPECT. Three of the worst words to hear. Tomorrow is Monday. Oh man, these are really tapping into the tape to the algebra teacher's wall aesthetic. You know my name, not my story. You see my smile, not my pain. You notice my cuts, not my scars. You can read my lips, not my mind. Minion memes were sort of a secret miracle because for a few years they gave us a break from boomers making edits out of Peanuts comics. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Those Facebook comics where Snoopy is talking out loud and saying some stupid bullshit, and Lucy is being shunned by everyone for having a sex life. Women have the right to control their own bodies. If you controlled them, you wouldn't need abortions. Anyways, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that Minion memes bad, Joker memes bad, but Minions dressed up as Joker, cancel out the cringe, make the best shit. Moving on to 2012, you get more of your general meme culture. We got a couple more advice animals. The photogenic jogger, suddenly Clarence Clarence, really high guy, bad luck Brian, Irma Gerd, overly obsessed girlfriend, the works. According to a piece of BuzzFeed journalism I found, this was the 32nd best meme of 2012. What if I told you the alphabet song is really Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Can you imagine if this is still what memes were? Grumpy Cat is the only one out of these that I really love, mainly because I just, I enjoy pet memes where I can go follow the pet on Instagram. And uh, I miss tartar sauce, so, you know. But in my eyes, the greatest contribution the year 2012 had to meme culture was Gundam style. Within, I think, like a month of this goddamn video coming out, everyone was recreating it like it was a fucking vampire voice around Halloween. And what's annoying isn't that the video has no comedic value by itself, but that none of the people who copied it added anything. Uh, Todd in the Shadows, a guy I know, made a really good video discussing this back in the day. But more importantly, making fun of Gang of Style is just stupid on its own. Y'all realize, Gangnam Style was already a joke, right? It's like trying to mock Eat It. Haha, <laughs> this video is so bad he accidentally slammed the door on that guy. Y yes, that's the joke. You're not parodying it, you hack. You're just stealing his bit. Anyways, the point of all this is that Gundam Style catapulted us into 2013. The year of the bad meme song. What does the fuck say? Excellent question. According to Google, the fox makes a yelping sound, which in my opinion is very close to the sound of a woman being murdered in an alley. Honestly though, that ain't shit. You ever seen two lynxes scream at each other? <laughs> Gundam style, what does the fox say, and the Harlem Shake were truly the unholy trinity. If you weren't there, you have no context of understanding what it was like for these three songs to all coexist at the exact same time. I guess the best way I can explain it is to just play all three of them at once. So after we survived that bout of shit, 2014 appeared over the horizon. 2014 was also terrible, but not in a fun way. Gamergate happened, which was this ridiculous circus of targeted anger, which was based entirely on lies. 
but it birthed such an ever-present ideology that I still see YouTubers try and defend it like it was technically good. Like, I watched a YouTuber who said, yeah, Gamergate was all lies, it was just stuff people on 4chan made up to harass female video game journalists who just had very normal opinions. And then the dude ended the video by going like, but the important thing is that it was the first time the internet ever banded together to fight the social justice warriors and their moral policing. And I was like, what does that mean? You just said a bunch of buzzwords. That's, that final sentence didn't say anything. Anyways, so after Gamergate, there was this new sect of men online who were bitter, they were angry, they were cynical, and they weren't going to be doing no Gundam dances. And they said, we need to start making our own new sets of memes. Meme number one, we should start saying that we identify as attack helicopters. Joke number two still pending. 2015 is such a weirdly okay year in the middle of absolute chaos. Back to the Future 2 happened, I graduated high school, gay marriage was legalized like a week later, and most importantly, my little bum bum was born. Hi, little baby. That was really good. Good drawing. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I still, I still have that hidden away on my computer somewhere. Yeah. I'm excited to see you guys work while you're here. Yeah. Who's almost half a decade old? Who's my little baby? Who's my little baby? Uh, but what memes were there in 2015? Um, uh, there was a shark that I guess didn't do a very good dance with Katy Perry. Uh, there was a blue and black dress that had weird lighting that everyone got mad about. Uh, there was, oh, that, that like sexist TV game host, he announced a pageant wrong. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a rat in New York who dragged a piece of pizza around. There was a vine about uh, some guy's shoes. Pretend that I talked about one of those. And that brings us to 2016. The official worst meme of 2016 was not started in 2016, but it was ruined in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, Pepe the Frog. You could have it all. My Pepe was my boy. He was my darling little boy. He was my little baby. And they took my boy from me. They took my boy. He didn't come back the same. <laughs> no. So Pepe started out as a comic character in an early internet series, but his iconic imagery was later used by people who just wanted to spread him across the internet. This was a pretty wholesome thing. There was just something very relatable about this sad green frog, and people liked seeing it in a lot of different places. But then something happened. It seems the select few decided that Pepe had gone too mainstream, and they wanted to find a way to take him away from the normies. And so, shortly after this, Pepe began to be used overwhelmingly as a mascot for white nationalism, specifically by those who were anti-Semitic, and wanted to fight for a white ethno state. What? It's uh, Pepe's become kind of a symbol. This reminds me a lot of the Circle game. Uh, I presume a lot of you in my target audience remember the Circle game, but if you don't, the Circle game was a spiritual spin off of the game. Uh, the game was a game where if you thought about the game, you lost, and so the joke would be someone in class would go up to you and they'd go like, hey, and you'd go, hey, what's up, and they'd go, you just lost the game. And of course you had, because you'd thought about the game, because they had brought the game up to you. Of course, when you think about it, they had also just thought about the game by telling you about the game, so I guess in a way they were sort of like the game's equivalent of a suicide bomber. Uh, but sort of what I always considered to be a little spin-off of the game was the hand symbol, the hand symbol, like, represented the game, and in some instances became its own separate thing. And the idea was your friend would be like, hey dude, look at this, and you'd look down and hey, they'd be doing the circle. And that means you lost, because seeing the circle means that you've lost. So after a while, the alt-right also decided to start appropriating the circle game as their imagery, and I was so amazingly confused, because the circle game and the game are the most innocent, 
non-political things in the world. But I completely understand why they've tried to do this, because the Circle Game and Pepe both in a way represent a huge aspect of how the alt-right wants to appear on the internet. They want their ideals hidden in plain sight, just out of the conscious mind's eye, passed around like rare trading cards. And by the time you catch on and notice, by the time you've seen what's really there, it's too late. You've already lost. The stupidest out of all of these weird dog whistly memes is Kekistan. If you've never heard of Kekistan, it was a fake country that like people in this subset of online culture would jokingly say they were a part of. And the joke was that their flag was the Nazi flag. I've never understood the point of them doing this. Is it supposed to be them going like, Haha, the left is so easily triggered, I bet they don't like the Nazi flag. I found a photo from VidCon 2016 of a bunch of people posing with the Kekistan flag, and I don't... <laughs> I, I, the, the funny thing is, I know some people in this photo who are very oh, outspokenly not Nazis, but I don't know what was going through their head when they posed for this. Like, what were they thinking? Like, posing with the Nazi flag to own the libs. Anyways, there's been this big movement in recent years to reappropriate Pepe from the literal neo-Nazis, and it seems like that's going somewhat okay. I really hope that they succeed, because I miss my boy. This brings us to 2017, or as I like to call it, the end of days. That'll hold him all white. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of 2017, an old Looney Tunes cartoon birthed a meme that would become known as Big Chungus. Big Chungus is a meme that, as far as I can tell, had a point originally. Uh, all the posters perceived him to have some assigned personality, just like all of the old advice animals. But with time, that basically entirely faded. Originally started out as a reference to an old Looney Tunes cartoon, but then it became an inside joke in a very small community, but then it became so overblown and widely posted everywhere that people got very annoyed by it and no one remembered what the joke was anymore, but it became such a phenomenon in that state that posting it started to be a reference to the fact that it was a widespread meme. The humor in the meme was that it was a meme, despite not being funny. The reference had become that inherently meta. I would call this almost a copypasta style of internet humor, and it started becoming very widespread at this point, and it led to a lot of good. There was a new resurgence in dodge posting because people were suddenly just in love with these old, terrible memes, and there was a new craze of editing music videos and trying to spread them all over the internet. Uh, the most famous example of these being We Are Number One, which I consider to be my favorite meme of the decade. Love you, Stefan. Miss you, man. But it also led to a lot of horrible, horrible stuff. For instance, what I would say is the worst meme of the decade, Ugandan Knuckles. How will you explain Ugandan Knuckles to your grandchildren? What words will you use? How will you try to assign worth to this horrible monstrosity. So a YouTube animator who's really talented did a caricature of Knuckles the Echidna for a video and then someone made a model out of it and then someone rigged it and there was a video game where you could import your own models to play as and people started importing the Knuckles model into the game and role playing as him and they made him Ugandan and they started mobbing people within the game. Fuck you up, sunshine. <laughs> For about two months after this happened, everyone on the internet seemed to think this was the funniest goddamn thing they'd ever seen, and everyone started referencing it, and the more that they referenced it, the more it became a phenomenon, so the more that people pretended that it was funny because it was something widely known by everyone. And then after that, everyone realized it was the most annoying, unfunny shit that the internet had ever come up with. Anyways, this brings us to 2018, for which I only have one meme prepared to talk about. The meme to end all memes. Or at least the idea of a meme actually being funny? So some of you who maybe have somehow never seen E before might be asking, wait, what's the joke? And the answer is, 
that humanity is the joke. The utmost hubris behind this image, whoever crafted it, must have known every step of the way that they were creating something that could only be used for evil, and yet they kept going. This is a testament to our culture's limits, the, the very lines we shouldn't cross, yet we insist on doing every single time. E. And finally, welcome to the very brief present, the year 2019. Weirdly enough, this was the hardest year for me to find bad memes in. Maybe it's because it's a lot easier to tell which memes are bad and embarrassing from a distance, because as they say, hindsight is 2020. I think Baby Yoda is going to end up being a contender in the future. I feel like it's definitely going to evolve into our generation's minion memes. But in my search, I found one last meme, which is sort of perfect to end our discussions in, because it literally feels like a meme that could have been from 2009. So this is Nordic Gamer. He is the main character in a series that I can only describe as Rage Comics for Incels. So it should definitely be pointed out that a lot of people use this meme exclusively for, like, ironic shit posts. But that stuff isn't interesting to me right now. We've already talked about this. I want to talk about all of the unironic posts using this meme. So the main use has turned out to be that this character, who is supposed to be stupid slash disabled, will say to the gamer, you want something that is generally conceived to be bad. And the gamer says, yes. For instance, in this comic here, a black caricature says, you want segregation to come back. And the gamer says, yes. But I didn't include this in the video because it's offensive, because offensiveness is just boring, it's not interesting at all. This comic is just unpopular opinion puffin' with extra steps. What really draws me into this comic enough to talk about it is the extended cast of characters, and more specifically, Trad Girl, or Traditional Girl. Trad Girl is supposed to represent the traditional conservative vision of what a woman is supposed to be. So Trad Girl is seen to be traditional by the writers because she doesn't sexualize herself like the Mommy E. Thought character does. She just stays prim and proper all the time and wears all these cute little blue dresses. And she stays at home all day, raising someone else's kid, cooking and cleaning and basically doing housework. Also, you have to keep in mind what the word traditional usually means in this subset of the internet. Like, when the comic shows the Nordic gamer and the trad wife together and calls their relationship traditional, it's traditional because... Because they're both white! So the reason I think that this meme is hilariously bad enough to end the video on is because it's so perplexingly delusional. The Nordic Gamer, in most of the non-ironic uses of this meme, is notable because he's clearly a person that exists. He's this unshaven mess, and he's just wearing this old black mangy hoodie, and this is such a sharp contrast between the character that does not exist, which is the trad wife, who exists exclusively as the creator's fantasy of the woman he wants to settle for him. It's fascinatingly vapid, right? This whole comic revolves around this main character admitting his own faults as if they're a point of pride for him, while illustrating other characters with faults as literally disabled, and one of the only other characters in the comic is a literal fantasy invented by him of a traditional, white, gorgeous, proper little thing that runs around in a gorgeous blue dress for him and raises his kids and cleans his house while, well, I guess he plays video games. Anyways, I think it's funny that we're exiting 2019 with the exact same quality of comic edits that we did 2009. So, a quick conclusion, which doesn't really have a lot to do with memes, but it's more just something I would like to talk about. When I look back at the 2010s, I find it hard to see it in any sort of positive light. I mean, it seemed like a shit show through and through, and near the end, everything just went to absolute hell. But what I have to force myself to remember is that the last 10 years have been 40% of my life. And if I were to say that that 40% has been nothing but bad, I would be lying. There were a lot of great moments in the 2010s, and that's something I have to keep reminding myself of. I mean, gay marriage was legalized, we took a photo of a black hole, JK Rowling stopped making Harry Potter books, and sure, that was matched with some bad moments. Bigotry's on the rise like it hasn't been in decades, Stephen Hawking died, 
J.K. Rowling started making Harry Potter movies again. But, but still, that doesn't cancel out the good, and that's what we have to remember. And you know, I can honestly say, as much as I am critical of the year 2019, Oh, I would never want to live in 2009, or 1999, or 1989, because all those years were much worse than this one. And so as much as it's very important to remember the past, and to be cynical of our mistakes, it's also more important to keep an eye on the future. We have to keep fighting to make the world a better place. And if we can make 2029 a better year than 2019, I think we've done a lot of good. So a big thing goes out once again to the sponsor of this video, Audible. I love Audible so much. I use it all the time and it's one of my favorite sponsors to do because not only do I get to tell you guys about this great service, but I get to tell you guys about all the cool creative things you can find on it. Audible is, of course, the iconic website and app that lets you download and play audiobooks on the go. The app is so convenient, you can change playback speeds if you want to listen to things more quickly, you can cut snippets of audio out to send to your friends, you can even send full audiobooks to your friends, and if it's the first time they've used that aspect of the service, they get to listen for free. That's so cool. With every month that you use Audible, you get one credit that you can use to unlock any audiobook alongside two select monthly Audible originals and a whole plethora of other features on the app. This month I started listening to The Victorian Internet, The Remarkable Story of the Telegraph, and the 19th Century's Online Pioneers, which is a title I did not even try to memorize. This is a fascinating documentation of one of humanity's greatest inventions in its technological revolution, the moment that we as a civilization became connected. This really was the pioneer to the internet. It's crazy hearing stories of how people lived just before this came around, and it's even crazier to think that this is what led to most everything we know about our modern civilization. I also picked up The Complete Wizard of Oz, which is one audiobook with 22 stories included that is almost 91 hours long. And I got that for only one audible credit. And that's the crazy thing about the credit system. For one Audible credit that you get every month, you can unlock any audiobook on the website you want. It's ridiculous. Anyways, I'm thinking about getting into this one in January, maybe, when I take a long and well-deserved break from making YouTube content. So you guys can check all of that out at audible.com slash Quinton or text Quinton to 500-500. Once again, that's audible.com slash Quinton or Quinton to 500-500. There you two are! I've been worried sick! Oh, you had the perfect timing though. You guys just skipped over the worst... Wait a minute. Where's... Uh, okay. Um... So, as I said, uh, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break now, which I really, really need. But I just want to stop and tell you guys, how grateful I am for everything you've done this year. 2019 sucked for me. I started off in a very bad place, I had a couple very public mental breakdowns, and uh, overall, uh, I was so grateful that you guys chose to support me through all that, and I feel like I'm entering this decade in a much better place than I entered the last one, entirely thanks to the support that you guys gave me, and I I am more grateful that I can find any way to put into words. Oh hey, you guys found him! Cool! Anyways, I want to give the biggest thank to my Patreon supporters. At the start of 2019, I did not take Patreon seriously. That was like, I don't know, I put some of that away for Christmas money. It was barely enough to pay my electricity bill. And now I've gotten to the point where, you know, with Patreon, I pay my entire month's rent. I don't really have to worry about you know, financially being able to pull off that huge part of my monthly bill because Patreon right now covers that. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful we've come this far. And uh, uh, I hope uh, more of you guys will join us in, in growing further and going to new expansive heights as we forge a new future and stuff like that. No, honey, are you okay? So the Porteo Heads and I will be back in February 2020 
I have a lot of videos in my head. I feel like I'm going to be really invigorated to make a bunch of content. Uh, I've got a, a lot of Fallen Titans ideas that I think are going to come out in rapid succession. I've got a couple Garfield uh, videos in my head that I'm going to be working on here and then. Uh, I've even got a Doctor Who video that I am currently writing that I think is going to happen. And I'm so excited, you know, after my forced break, that I, I'm going to force myself to take the break. I'm so excited to show you guys all that I have in my head. I think we're going to have a blast and uh, I, I hope you guys are excited to see more of my work in the, this new decade. With that, I've been Quentin Kyle Hoover and that's all you need.